Good morning, Bethesda Church. It is Pentecost Sunday, and I am looking forward to what Holy Spirit is going to do. This is the birthday of the church, so happy birthday, Church of God. We're going to enter into his presence. I've already felt his presence so strong this morning during our worship practice. And I just expect great things to happen today. So if you would, stand to your feet. Come on down to the front. Feel free to jump, shout, clap, do cartwheels, whatever you want to do, however you want to express your worship. We're looking forward to what is going to happen this morning. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, Spirit, when you do, you make my heart down. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving.
spirit when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. I know you will fill me. Oh, fill every heart, fill every life. you to keep standing and keep pressing in this is a powerful day that we celebrate it's one of the seven feasts feasts of Israel right in the middle the, the one the, the between uh, one two three and four five and five six seven <laughs> the feast of harvest or as we know it's called the feast of Pentecost amen and I'm going to talk more about this in detail, but I just felt the stirring of the Holy Spirit to just come up and just talk to you briefly about what we're enjoying today. The Feast of Harvest, the Feast of Pentecost. This is the culmination of all that we believe for, all we've been waiting for, all we've been wanting, all we've been asking for. It's also the culmination of what the Father has always intended for us to have, but had to work through the process of sending His Son, and His Son giving His life, and His Son raising from the dead. And then the Father could give us what He always wanted us to have, Holy Spirit. That's harvest time for us. We're reaping what the, what the Father has sown and what Jesus has baptized with. So first of all, I want us to all, because most of us in the room are filled with the Holy Spirit. But I'm asking God for a fresh baptism today. Jesus is the one who John said would baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And I believe he's coming in with his fire today to give us fresh fire. I know Justin's going to sing that in a few minutes. Pentecost is a day of rejoicing. It's a day of celebration. I want to read something that... Um, Chuck Pierce said about it, if I can find it. Ah. Pentecost is a time of celebration for abundance. Amen. How many of you are ready to move into the abundant life that Jesus said was ours? You know the devil is going to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's going to resist and try to keep us from everything God has for us. But on this day, the day of Pentecost, it's a breakthrough day. Breaking through the resistance, breaking through the delay, breaking through the things that the enemy has set against us to keep us from what God has for us. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God has something for you today. <laughs> Pentecost. It's a time of celebration for abundance, and it's a time to celebrate the Lord's provision. Jesus stood up on the feast and he said, I am the living water. He who drinks of me will never thirst again. And then the Bible explains under that Jesus was speaking of the Holy Spirit who had not yet been given. You realize that for centuries the people of God were waiting for Pentecost. Oh, I'm going to get too much into my message, but I just want to just stop with that. We're celebrating and, and I've never asked you to do this before. But I just felt in my spirit, the Lord, I mean, when I walked in the room and you started this song, I just felt the anointing went from here to here. And, and that's awesome. Because 
we, we've all been in services. It took a little while. It felt like we were kind of cranking it up, trying to get it going. But we just jumped right into the harvest, right into Pentecost, right into the fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. And each one of us are crying out in this song, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Do you realize that at least in the last century, every major move of God started with that prayer? Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. And we're asking him to come and do what he did for Jesus. Rest on us. That word rest means to abide, to stay, and to dwell. Holy Spirit, don't just come and visit us. Come and inhabit us. Come and dwell with us. Come and stay with us, Holy Spirit. Empower us, encourage us, strengthen us, heal us, help us. Do everything that you can do. Come on, I'm preaching better than your amen in this morning. So we're going to start this song over. Not that we're not already there, but this just is so powerful. I just felt like the Lord said, I like it when my people cry out for what I want them to have more than anything. This is the gift that God wants every believer to experience fully. And, and when we don't, guess what? We're only living up to a partial portion of our inheritance. This is the fullness. This is the fullness. The fullness of our inheritance. What Jesus gave his life for. What Jesus won for us is that we would have Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit would have us. Amen? Come on, let's keep on worshiping. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come.
Yes, you're all we want, Lord. Come and do what you want to do. I'm going to burn for you. Oh, come, Lord. We're asking for a fresh, fresh fire. Oh, I'm going to burn, I'm going to burn, I'm going to burn for you. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. I want what you desire. I'm gonna burn for you. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. Give me a fresh, fresh fire. the bird for you
stay on top of it to keep it from getting out of control. But we won't, don't want to do that this morning. We want to let Holy Spirit make the fire as hot as it can get. Spread and catch everything around us on fire, every person, every heart. Lord, we're asking right now that you would set us ablaze, God. Make us white hot, Lord, so that everything we come in contact with will burn for you, Lord. We're asking for the purging, the cleansing flame, God. Clear away the dross, God. Clear away the impurities, God. To make us holy, make us righteous in your sight, God. So we're asking right now. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down. That I can't contain, that I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain, that I can't control I want more of you, God I want more of you, God Set a fire 
Sometimes you come like rain Sometimes you come like fire Sometimes you come like rain Holy wind blows Fill this place With your presence Just like you did on that day Fill this place with the wind of the glory of the presence of God. Wind blow by the fall. Wind blow by the fall. Wind blow by the fall. In this atmosphere, we should be saying, spring up, a well. Holy Spirit, in me, spring up. A river bubbling and breaking out in Jesus' name. When they waited for the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came on that first Pentecost, something came upon them, and something from within came out. Amen? We just need to just lift our voices and begin to pray, begin to worship, begin to celebrate, begin to be... Uh, exuberant once again for what he has given us Holy Spirit you have fallen on us Holy Spirit you have inhabited us Holy Spirit you are within us and there's the evidence of his presence come on just pray in the spirit if you want to and just release that river river of life fill Fill us and overflow from us today. On the day of Pentecost, they spoke in other tongues. They were given the, the, the a heavenly language. And many of the tongues they were given when they were amongst the people, they heard the praises of God in their own languages. Come on, God, give us a supernatural ability now to worship. A supernatural ability to worship you. How could those men, they must be drunk. No, they're not drunk. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, how come they're speaking our languages? Because the Holy Spirit wants you to know He's real. The Holy Spirit wants you to know that God loves you. You know, when Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, he was talking about the fullness of the gospel. We have so narrowed down the gospel in our time and in the modern day church that so many believers don't even include the Holy Spirit in their gospel, right? Other than being saved and regenerated by the Spirit, the filling, the fullness, the empowering, the comfort, the conviction, some of those things are omitted. But we, as Justin just said, we want all of the Spirit. We want all of the Spirit to fill us. But listen to this. We want the Holy Spirit to control us. Amen. A preacher said one time that we live one of three ways. We live either in control, which always leads us to the next. We live out of control which can lead us to the best under control. Amen. And that's what Holy Spirit's doing. He's bringing us under his control so that he can use us, empower us, do what he wants to do in us and through us. Amen. So I'm just encouraging not to be ashamed, not to be ashamed. Camilla and I have paid a high price in this region to pray in tongues. We've had so many people come to this church and leave because we prayed in tongues. People that were not comfortable with that. But I'm telling you what, what we're not comfortable with, we need to say, God, forgive us for resisting and grieving the Holy Spirit. We're not going to quench the Spirit of God. Amen. We're going to partner with the Holy Spirit. We're going to work with Holy Spirit. We're not ashamed of Holy Spirit. We love Holy Spirit. He's one of the, the, three, the, the three revealed persons of the Godhead. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I know you've got another song. I'd like you to sing the song, Fill the Room. Are you, are you still doing that one? You weren't doing that one? Fill me up. That's it. Fill me up. Sorry. Fill me up. Can we just believe that there's still room in each one of us? I know there's still room in me for God to fill. And there's areas in our life that we need to open to him because maybe we've held control. We've said, well, I'll give you this, but I'm going to keep this. But can we say, Lord, I, I'm yielding Holy Spirit to you on this day of Pentecost. Some of you are watching online. I'm yielding on this day of Pentecost to say, fill me up completely. Every part. You know, when you, when you fill up a vessel, you, if there's a place in it that, that it, whatever you're pouring in is not going in, you try to make room for it to go into that place. And that's what Holy Spirit's doing right now. He's trying to make room for areas where we built a wall or we put a plug. You're not coming in here. Lord, we want you to come. We invite you to come into every area of our life, into our soul, our emotions, into our spirit, into our finances, into every area, into our conversations, into our pleasure, the things that we enjoy. We invite you to be center of it all. Jesus, be the center of it all. Holy Spirit, come. You're always with us. I want you to be happy everywhere we go. Everywhere we are, I want you to be pleased. I want you to feel loved, and I don't want to grieve you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is like a dove, and the dove is very gentle. A dove is very gentle. We don't want to, we, we don't want to uh, cause the dove to leave. Holy Spirit, stay. Stay. And remember, the first description of this part of God, the Spirit of God, is what? Holy. It's, sometimes we just say it. We don't even think about it. He's Holy Spirit. So in the Holy Spirit, we don't want to bring any deeds of darkness. We don't want to, we want, don't want to harbor unforgiveness. Do you know unforgiveness is a part of your life that you're, letting the, you're not letting the Holy Spirit in? <sighs> Say amen or oh my. <laughs> Grief, guilt disappointment all of those are areas we have to say holy spirit come into my grief holy spirit come into my pain holy spirit come into my failure come into my disappointment fill up every part is that our prayer today can we give the lord a wave offering many times on the day of pentecost they would lift up that first fruit offering and they would wave it before the lord I want you to know the offering that we wave today is our lives. We are living sacrifices. We are purchased. Do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. And we're waving our lives before him saying, we yield to you. Come and fill us. Fill us up. Fill us up. Fill me up.
fill us up, fill us up. So yeah, you wonder what we have planned today. Whoa, we have planned to engage in the Holy Spirit. This is why we come. This is why we meet together. We come to get filled up, not just on the day of Pentecost, but every day. <laughs> every day is a day of Pentecost for the believers. So you are invited. I know that you're doing that. You are invited to engage right now. This time together is why we are here for empowerment, fresh empowerment, fresh filling, fresh, fresh. Justin mentioned the fire this week, and I was thinking about it too, Justin. I was thinking about that. I said, I thought to myself, fire doesn't play nice. Fire will come in and get in your business. Fire will come in and disrupt <laughs> your plans. But God says, I have plans for you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Plans to bless you. Plans to, for an amazing destiny for your life. So I just prophesy the plan and purpose of God over your life and over your family that no weapon formed against you would be able to prosper in the name of Jesus because you are filled with fire. You are empowered today. You have the goods. You have the goods. You're packing today. How many of you can say you're packing today? You know what I mean on that. We're packing today. Woo! And we're going to come to the table. I just feel like it's so wonderful that we're being able to do this on Pentecost Sunday because Stephen mentioned that one of the reasons one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to convict the church doesn't know as a whole we haven't known what to do with conviction we just push it aside and we say I don't like the way that feels so I'm gonna go to a different church or I'm gonna not go to that Bible study again because that got too deep but Jesus has made a way by the blood of Jesus, he made a better way to cover us, to wash us, to forgive us, and to make a way of escape for us. It's so wonderful that his blood makes a way of escape for us. So as we come and come to the table and take our communion, I just, I just thank God. Conviction is a gift to each one of us because it keeps our heart pliable and clean and tender before the Lord. Keep your heart tender before the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you soften our hearts today. Your Stephen mentioned it, even disappointment, even not knowing what your future holds, not knowing what the future is. Wanting to see breakthrough before it's come. Why is it taking so long? Whatever concern you have today, there's an answer for it today. There's an answer. There's an answer. And we take communion because we have covenant with the Lord. We have his precious promises. So we just thank you for it, Lord. We receive it today by the blood of Jesus bread of your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So just come to the table. We're going to just worship and keep worshiping. In a few minutes, we'll take together. So just come and get your cup and go back to where you'd like to be with your family or with someone or just with the Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Holy Spirit, you are welcome.
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence. Come on, we're tasting. Just take your the elements now and get the bread out. We're going to take our time with communion this morning. And musicians, I know you have communion too. If you want to take, I'll, I'll keep sustaining it. Get your bread together. In a moment, I'm going to ask Dennis to pray over the bread. And then we're going to worship a little bit more. And then we're going to take the cup. Amen. Oh, this is celebration. Jesus never really meant for this supper to be a somber, you know, dreary meal. This is the Lord's table. This is the Lord's table. bread represents that Jesus Christ became flesh and blood. He left heaven where he could have stayed, but he humbled himself in Philippians chapter 2, and he became a man. And he humbled himself even to become the sacrifice for us all. Amen. Because he lived, because he gave his life, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity, and by His stripes we are healed. If there's any sickness in your body, just command that sickness to go. It cannot stay. It does not belong. By his stripes, we are healed. Lord, we thank you that you came and you gave your life. Greater love has no one than this, than he laid down his life. And Jesus, you laid down your life. You demonstrated the love of God. And this is how love is demonstrated. Remember that scripture? That God gave us his son. Dennis, would you just pray over this bread as we take it together? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your body. God, we thank you for your body that was broken for us, Lord, that you put on flesh. And you became one of us, Lord, and that you gave your body up to be broken. You were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes we are healed. So we thank you for your body, Lord. Broken for us. That covers us, Lord. We love you and we thank you. And we take this in remembrance of you and all that you've done. In Jesus' name.
your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain, rain down. Let's sing it again. Holy Spirit. tells us even in the old covenant that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness but the blood of Jesus has forgiven us I'm forgiven and now I have a reason for living amen just that I'm going to ask you to just say a prayer over this cup the blood of the new covenant not based on the blood of sacrifices of animals but the blood of the lamb the blood of jesus christ amen so would you just prepare and get your cup ready and we'll take together jesus we thank you that you willingly gave your life lord you laid down your life and you shed your blood so that we could be reunited with the father that you created a new covenant with the Father. And now we, by faith, can be a part of that covenant and receive everything that the Father has promised you. Lord, we thank you for your blood. Father, we thank you that you sent your only Son to die on our behalf and that that blood is still alive and effective and it will never lose its power. It can heal it can save, it can change, and it, it lives forever before your throne, Lord. Jesus, you sprinkled it on the mercy seat, and it is alive forevermore. We thank you for your blood, Lord, and we take it right now by faith in Jesus' name.
one more time how much we love you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love your and your daughters would prophesy. But then he said your slaves would prophesy. In one commentary it said that we were slaves. We were all slaves to sin. Amen. We were slaves to darkness, the dominion of darkness. But now we're free.
Release freedom. Holy Spirit might, might lead you to go and pray for someone across the room. But you are a Holy Spirit agent because you carry the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. So just release it. Just release it. We release it. Release the joy. Release the peace. Love the way you do. 
Yes, we love your way. We love the way you move. <laughs> we love the way you move. <laughs> we love the way you move in our midst. Uh, mm. We love the way you move. Just breathe in, just breathe in. <laughs> He's moving. We love the way we move in your midst. We love your ways. We love your ways. We love your ways. We're not over your ways. We love how you move. Sometimes the greatest empowerment that you receive is to walk in love with others. The greatest empowerment you receive is fruit-bearing love, patience, goodness, long-suffering, I love what you just said. I felt the Holy Spirit just respond. I'm not over this. I'm not over this. <laughs> I'm never going to get over your love. Yeah. Never going to get over your presence. Because in your presence, there's always something fresh. Yeah. Fresh fire. Fresh bread. Fresh revelation. Yeah. Fresh restoration. Amen. And how can a local church sustain revival? Is not to get over the presence of God. That's right. <laughs> That's the only way it'll happen. Is to stay hungry, wanting more always, and not change the subject. Because then the Holy Spirit will light on what we need. But we stay in the center. We stay honoring His presence, loving His ways, and staying hungry and singing the songs like we did today. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Fill me up. Thank you for more. Thank you for more. Thank you for more. More, more. Just speak that word over you. Just speak it over your life. I say more, 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 Holy more. Spirit. I want more, more, more. More encounters with you. We want Dreams, more. revelation. Huh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We want more. We want more. We want more. I want more. He's a good father. Give me He'll more. Give, us give what me we more. Ask. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. We're leaning into you. We're leaning in. We're leaning in. We're leaning in. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Songs of joy, songs of Hallelujah, 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 How important Pentecost is in this year of crossing over. So, so important. It's the, it's the central. It's the, I would say it's, it's a, it's one of those marker moments as we are crossing over. As many are in transition. The Holy Spirit will keep us grounded. He is keeping us grounded. Yes, He is. Stephen yes, and I had some yes, time just to yes, pray last is. night. And we were just reflecting and, and speaking and praying and saying we want more. And just 
talking about just our personal lives being in such transition, but the Holy Spirit, His presence is keeping us. He's keeping us grounded. He's keeping us um, aware of what's most important. Oh, 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 fellowship with you. Yeah, sweet fellowship you. with you. Sweet fellowship. Fellowship sweet. with you. Yes. Fellowship my favorite time of the day is my fellowship with you. Fellowship with you. Some of you know that back in, can you turn this up, please? Some of you know that back in uh, about 2014, I started having a divine uh, encounter with Holy Spirit. And back in those days, we didn't have any problems sleeping, did we? But the Holy Spirit would wake me up every morning at 444. And it happened day after day. I thought maybe a few weeks, but it started going a few months. And then it was almost two years. Getting up every day. But I learned that it was a wooing. It was an invitation. Holy Spirit was saying, come and fellowship with me. And he was getting me even before the sun came up. And I would sit down in a really nice chair that I soon began to call my prayer chair. <laughs> Because I would sit and I would just simply put my hands out. I would position myself to embrace and to be embraced by the presence of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. It's life changing for me. And I want to say it prepared me for what was coming. Because what came hit us like a whirlwind. We went into revival and we didn't know what to do. We, we, we were treading water for weeks because hundreds of people were coming. Hundreds of people were happy and hundreds of people were not. But in the midst of it, Holy Spirit proved His love and His power. And we've never been the same. You know, a real encounter with God will leave you with a limp. Yeah. You remember the story of Jacob when he wrestled with God. Yeah. He never got healed of that limp because every time he moved, he remembered that encounter. And I'm telling you what, every time I see the numbers 444, I think of the Ezekiel 44.4 when it said, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Yeah. We prayed that all morning, Justin and team. You guys are such an amazing team, a team yes. of sanctified Amen. lovers of his awesome. presence awesome. Awesome. that we've come in together. I mean, we feasted today. Yes. You might go somewhere to eat after yeah. this, but you're not going to get a meal, anything close to this. <laughs> This is so good. Yes, so, thank you. is it okay to tell the Lord He's delicious? Yes. Oh yeah. Sweet yes. like honey on my lips. Yeah. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I want you to tell us quickly, and then we're going to take our offering. You make any announcements you want to, but tell us a little bit about the significance of Pentecost and the year that we're in. The well, year. We just need to be reminded in the Jewish on the Jewish calendar, this is the year of the house. house. So the year of the corporate house, the house of God, and the year of your house, your personal house growing and being um, set on fire. I, I, I can't get away from that word that the Holy Spirit will keep us grounded. Um, he will keep us on on. Um, solid foundation not sinking sand so that means no matter what's happening around us finance is not enough financial issues family issues go down the list holy spirit will keep us grounded and when we put our feet firmly on the foundation of jesus christ as the leader and ruler of our lives and our families and we trust his word we will not be shaken amen the bible says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken it will be it will be how Especially many of you can say day. you've had some shaking oh yeah oh yeah i think that would be like everybody <laughs> but when we are solid and we have the foundation of the lord not the things that we think we want you know the natural things but the foundation so this year of the house is so significant he's pouring out his spirit 
on us, in us, through us. And I just see it in the spirit as oil just oozing. Have you ever spilled oil? It's not containable either. It gets everywhere. You think you cleaned it all up and you still find that it spilled even further than you thought and it got all greasy and you know if it's essential oil you smell it everywhere come on have y'all done that but I just see the oil of the spirit just spreading all over his house today and 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 your house some of you saw and they're not here this morning but they'll be here soon uh, Chad and Kara had their baby and uh, his name is Jedediah. They're probably watching. We all love you and send our blessing to you and that beautiful baby. But Chad made a recording. I think Quentin was there and, and Grandma, Grandma Melinda was there. And they were taping this because Chad wanted to do that. He wanted to anoint his son oh, yeah, that's and right. dedicate his son. That. But he yeah. didn't just listen. Chad, Chad just didn't do the, uh, you know, the little like I do to you. <laughs> He put it on his hands and he went, he smeared him. He smeared it all yeah. over him. That baby was covered with the anointing. Yeah, that's, we'll take an oil smear That's today. what we're taking right now. <laughs> we're taking a smearing. Yeah. The smearing of the oil yes. on us, just like Chad smeared Jedediah. And as you are transitioning personally in your house, your personal house, whether it's your this house or your personal home, if you're transitioning, if you're in transition, just know that he is releasing his Holy Spirit over you to keep you, to ground you. Amen, Mike? Amen. Quentin Amen. and I were talking this week about a song that Carmen gave uh, years ago, and it was called No More Monsters. Some of you might remember that song. I don't want no monsters, monsters in my house. You're nothing but a demon. It's time for you to get out. Come on. The year of the house is a year of God coming in and the enemy getting out. Amen. I just want to remind you, you are, uh, you have authority and you are uh, to, to clean and operate in your home, a place of, of heaven on earth. Amen. I wasn't able to make it, and some of you did, but the on earth was yesterday, and I've heard a few good reports that it was wonderful. So we just bless that celebration. We're having a little carryover today. How about that? We say, Lord, from uh, Matthew 6, verse 10, Jesus said, when you pray, pray on earth as it is in heaven. And right now, honestly, as awesome as this is, it's just a foretaste just a pre-taste, a little sample of what we're going to have when we're with Jesus, right? Woo! Camilla, I'll make this announcement. First of all, we had a wonderful men's fellowship yesterday. Uh, I looked around because we had a time of prayer. There were 12 of us, and we just felt like the apostles. Uh, we gathered together, and two by two, we prayed for each other. We gave testimonies. We had just a wonderful, wonderful time of worship with Justin and Dennis. And it's just so good. And in that place, God says in the Psalm 133, in that place of unity, in that place when men get, gather, and women, but in this case the men, the Lord said, I will command a blessing. So one of the reasons I feel like we're just soaring today is even some of the fruit of our gathering yesterday. Amen. And again, this Pentecost is the festival of the harvest. We're, we're receiving and reaping from things we've sown. And some of you, it's from things you've sown years and years and years ago. But God is bringing it to pass. Amen. God is bringing it to pass. I want to say, I am not over. I am head over heels, absolutely more in love today. I love you more today than I did yesterday, Camilla. That was a song we sang to each other almost 33 years ago on June the 10th. 36 years ago, I remember picking up my phone and calling my mother in Florida and telling her, Mom, I found the one that my heart loves. And three years later, we were married, and we're celebrating our 33-year anniversary 
this uh, coming Friday, just a week, just a, less than a week away. I love you, I love you, I love you. And I want to say that because Camilla is stronger and coming out, she's breaking through. Amen. The past two years have been a little tough, and we, we've been very careful on what we do and how much we can do. But she's been setting it as a goal and believing in faith that we'd be able to have a little getaway. So we're going to slip away next weekend and go to the metropolis of Dallas. And it's not that far, but it's a big deal for us. We're going to go and we're going to celebrate. We're going to rest. And probably Sunday morning, I'm going to tune in because you don't want to miss next Sunday. I'll miss, but I don't want to miss. But thank God for the Mebo and the broadcast because when you're not here, how many of you know when you're not? It's so good to see you, Cynthia. And I know you watch. We see you watching all the time. But it's so good to be here. There's an extra blessing when you're here. But thank God for the blessing of being able to watch it. So I'll be watching next Sunday. But you don't want to miss because Don Crumb, we might have that. Yes, Don Crumb. Doesn't he look great? What a man of God he is. He's we're so blessed at Bethesda that he and Sherry are fellowshipping with us and, and ministering to us. So he'll be here, I know, with a fresh word. This is a man that doesn't preach stale bread. He preaches fresh bread. Amen. So you don't want to miss next Sunday. Amen. And then continuing, um, our Game Changers will be meeting this Saturday. So if you're part of that, y'all were off on Memorial Day weekend, but you're back up. And... Um, I want to highlight uh, several meetings. Uh, starting with tomorrow night, we're going to be having a time of worship and yes, prayer. Yes, that's right. At Tyler that's Metro. tomorrow. Tomorrow wow. night, yeah. Yay. It's, it's here. So uh, we invite you to join us at 7 o'clock. We're joining in with Tyler Metro and their intercessors, and we're going to be praying together over our nation, over our region. Our friend Cynthia Dunbar is going to be joining us, and she's amazing, and it just will be a great time of celebration. Um, in June 21st, ladies, all the ladies, raise your hand. Our wonderful Joy Kelly is going to be speaking Put your hand at down, the Chris. hub. It's just for the ladies. <laughs> Joy. Joy was going to be in the house. And only the ladies can come. Well, Man. yeah, she's speaking we're at the hub. Be on awesome. the 21st on Tuesday night. So I just want to highlight, I want to also highlight our Friday night fire that's going to be amazing with oh, yeah. our Ashlyn. great friend Ashlyn uh, from Argentina. Ashlyn from Argentina that carries fire, prophetic. Oh my goodness, she came, just came to a you know, Friday night fire. She was supposed to come a, a month ago or so and we had to shift. Mm -hmm. I think this is appointed. I think that her yes, being here gonna, we've shifted her several right times, after actually. Pentecost <laughs> is probably just getting us ready for the fire that she's going to so release. She has a great prophetic Woo. anointing, and you don't want to miss that. Prophetic and release this fire, and she's just a great revivalist. So lots of things going on. I pray that you are getting your um, little ad, you know, your announcement list when you come in the door, and you're getting our emails to keep you connected. Many of you are in a home group, but I want to encourage you, if you are not a, in a home group, just see us and we will get you plugged in to a home group for fellowship, which will be so uh, important in this day. Um, I know that we had a testimony, and Barbara, I think if we can, we're going to set that for next week, just because of our time. I see that we've gone a little bit longer, but... Um, what fire looks like is people going out and doing the stuff. That's right. And um, we've, we've had some of our ladies, Barbara, Deborah, and Teresa, Teresa Reamers, uh, that went and prayed. And they're going to give a good report. Now, of, if you're on their team, your name has to end with an A. Yeah. Barbara, Deborah, Teresa. So don't forget. We're not going to forget. I want you all to share this report because it was amazing that you went and prayed at one of the schools. You know, I was kind of fortunate because when I said that, I got to thinking about your name. It could be spelled with a R O H, but yours is an A, isn't it? Deborah. Deborah. Barbara. Teresa. Camilla. Pamela. Joya. <laughs> Ushers, come on. Let's give our offerings. I have my tithe in my pocket. I'm so excited to be able to give to God. 
You remember, I, I just had a fresh revelation. I'll just say quickly again. Our tithes belong to God. When you give your tithe, it's God's. You're giving it to God. It's like the offering that you are saying, this is yours. It's so awesome. So, Lord, we ask you to bless the giving. Those that are giving online, those that are giving here in person, just bless every home represented, every life. And we thank you that this is a celebration of abundance. So I declare and I decree that every giver will see it good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And everybody cried out, Amen. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Would you set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control? I want more of you, God. I want more. 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 So won't you pour it out? I want more. 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 part of this song. Let's see if this can be a true, honest declaration. No place I would rather be than here in your presence. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love. Here in your love. No place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. No place I would rather be than here in your love, here in your love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You all carry the glory and you released it today. We appreciate it. Really appreciating Ed and Sheila coming in and joining the worship team. Vance, I call him Sir Vance, Sir Vance a lot. <laughs> Cameron, you sounded wonderful on the drums today. Justin, Dennis, you guys are, what a pleasure. What a blessing. Hallelujah. I want to say happy anniversary also to Sheila and Ed. Their 50-year anniversary is coming up. Happy anniversary to you both. Wow, what a blessing you are. Ah, oh, my heart's really overflowing. And it's exciting. The Lord said something to me personally this morning in my prayer time. See, on Sundays, I'm really focused on what the Lord wants to do. But I try, I really try to separate what I'm going to do to my time to just be with the Lord, you know. And so when I was with the Father and just fellowshipping, uh, thank you, Wendy. Our children are being dismissed. We forgot to do that. We love you and bless you. In my time with the Lord this morning, the Lord said, Stephen, do you remember when I told you that I wanted you to become unoffendable? Now, some of you that have been here long enough remember that season that I was really talking that, that I believe God wants to put such a pure love in our heart that we cannot be offended. That we have such depth of love uh, that we're not offended unoffendable. Everybody say unoffendable. Well, this morning, I feel like this is a process of my growth in the Lord. The Lord said, Stephen, I am now going to give you grace to become undisappointable. Is that, is that a word even? 
That's what I heard anyway. To not be disappointed. To not, or discouraged. Maybe that's another un, undiscourageable. How about that? Because that's what the Holy Spirit was saying. To be undisappointed and undiscouraged. That God could make in me such hope and such faith and give me such grace that no matter what my circumstances, I will not be discouraged. How about, would, would you like to get in on that? I gave this to the men yesterday. The Lord said to me, you cannot let your circumstances taint your perspective. Cannot let your circumstances taint. I asked Dennis in the meeting to look up the word taint. It means to contaminate or to pollute. We cannot let our circumstances discourage us. We can't let our circumstances uh, dissuade us. Not to the left, not to the right. Right? Right? Don't let our circumstances taint our perspective. And my perspective has to be one that is undiscourageable, unoffendable, but hopefully not unlovable. (laughs) Amen? Look at somebody say, I love you. I love you. Paul had such a great relationship with the churches that he fathered and helped to build that many times when he would start his letters to those churches, he would say things like, I thank my God every time I think about you. And I I don't know, I can't speak for every pastor, but I want you to know that many times when I drive by and I see Paul working in his yard, I thank God for Paul. I get a phone call from Bradley giving me a great testimony. I thank God. I look at uh, Aaron, this young man who's growing up. Are you going to be a junior next year? A junior. Man, they grow up so fast. Amen. Uh, and all of you, you make, me, you make me so happy. One couple in this, this church that makes me a happy pastor is Beverly and Leon. They make me the happiest pastor. And I love them so much. <laughs> Cynthia, you make me happy. All of you. I'm not leaving anybody out. And you know what? Right now we're small enough. I know your name. But I want you to know when we have 500, I'm going to do my best to know every single name. Will you, will you go, with that, go with that too? That we're going to be a church that loves, really loves. I think one of the greatest demonstrations of really loving is learning somebody's name. Learning their names. Amen. Well, I know what time it is, believe me, but I do have a a really encouraging word on this day of Pentecost, and I'm going to start in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, which is such a powerful scripture that I just wanted to just speak it over you today. Lord, bless your word, bless this word, and let every ear be open to hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen? 2 Corinthians 3 verse 6 He alone, and we're talking about the Spirit now, He alone makes us adequate ministers who are focused on an entirely new covenant. Wow. Our ministry is not based on the letter of the law, but through the power of the Spirit. This is what Pentecost did. Let me just pause for a minute and just talk for a second. The first Pentecost was 50. Pentecost means 50. Pentecost is 50th, and it was the 50th day to celebrate the freedom, their exodus from slavery and out of Egypt. So the first Pentecost, 50 days later, Moses went up the mountain, and God gave the law. And on that day, a lot of things happen. I won't go into all the details. But on that day, when the law was given, the nation of Israel was born. It's the birthday of Israel, Pentecost. So it's a celebration. They're celebrating their freedom. Man, that was powerful, if I say so myself. I couldn't stop just crying out. I said, Mel Gibson's got nothing on us. Freedom! Right? So Israel was born on Pentecost. But now the law was given in the first covenant. 
And on Pentecost, Jesus gave the Spirit. And this scripture is talking about that. Our ministry is not based on the letter of the law, but through the power of the Spirit. The letter of the law kills, but the Spirit pours out life. And here's another contrast between the two Pentecosts. The first Pentecost of the Old Testament, the nation of Israel, and the the Pentecost hundreds of years later when Jesus gave the Spirit. The contrast is when Moses came down the mountain, he was very angry because the people had created another image to worship, a golden calf. And on that day when Moses said, who is standing for the Lord? The Levites stood with Moses and 3,000 people on the first Pentecost were killed. That's what happens under the law because there's no sacrifice for sin but in the spirit when Jesus gave the Holy Spirit Peter stood up and he preached to the multitudes that were in Jerusalem celebrating this festival and the 3,000 didn't die they came alive they were added to the church isn't that powerful so God is a God of great redemption and he's showing us today I hope we have eyes to see I want to read some scriptures and just kind of just put this into the atmosphere. John chapter 1. John the Baptist testified, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting upon him. This is the first time this ever happened. John the baptizer, the prophet, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Then the Lord shows up. And in a verse before this, John said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And now John himself says, I saw the Holy Spirit descending like a dove from heaven and resting on him. I didn't know he was the one. But when God sent me to baptize with water, he told me, The one on whom you see the Spirit descend and rest is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that beautiful? So the first thing that happened when Jesus began his ministry was he was baptized by John. And the first fruit of that baptism was the favor of the Lord baptizing Jesus with the Holy Spirit. And that Jesus then would become the baptizer of the Holy Spirit. John said of himself, I baptize with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and Fire, Justin, fire. I remember we were saying fire a lot. We still do. But there were times that fire just didn't sound strong enough, so we started saying fuego. Fuego, fuego, fuego. Fire. (laughs) Matthew 3, verse 16. After his baptism, Baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened. This is what I think the baptism of the Holy Spirit does for everyone who receives this baptism, is the heavens open. There is an open heaven over us. Amen? Amen. That's amazing. And what does that mean? That means the, the resources of heaven are available to us. We have access, complete, direct access to the Father through the Son, through the Holy Spirit. So we saw... The heavens open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. Now Matthew goes a little further, and he says in verse 17, And a voice from heaven. I don't know why John didn't talk about that, because, you know, John's all about miracles, the the gospel of John. But here in Matthew, And a voice from heaven said, This is my God voice. Are you ready? This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Some of you just aren't going to laugh. I know you won't. You're just not going to do it. This is my dearly loved son. So this first baptism of Jesus, who is the first fruit. Come on. The the day of Pentecost is the festival of harvest or first fruits. First fruits. Jesus is the first of many. He's the first of many sons. Right? So what... That means what happened to Jesus can happen to us. 
What Jesus did, we can do. What he had, we can have. Where he went, we can go. How he fought, we can fight. How he loved, how he rejoiced, all the things that Jesus demonstrated, we can have the same thing. Amen? So here, we can have the same favor in the baptism, the fresh baptism that I'm receiving today. I hope you're receiving a fresh baptism. Uh, we're doing some great teaching on Wednesday night. Ed has been bringing some teachings on baptisms. And he's taught us that baptism means to be submerged, completely absorbed. What is baptized completely absorbs uh, is the water or, the, or the whatever you're baptized in completely is absorbed. Totally. Jesus, immersed, submerged, absorbed. He saw the Spirit descending and a voice, this is my dearly loved son. So this week, on Thursday, I went to a pastor's meeting and they asked me if I had anything in my spirit. And this is what I said. I said, on the day of Pentecost, I think we should, before we rejoice about the power of the Holy Spirit, we should rejoice about the presence of the Holy Spirit. We should rejoice that he is with us, that he is in us, that he loves us. We should rejoice that he has, what we read in the very beginning, he has made us adequate ministers. You know, sometimes the word adequate is used in a negative term, like, well, that was adequate. But this is not negative. We are more than capable. We are enabled and empowered and we are adequate for the test, for the shaking, Camilla, for the seasons that we go through that can be rough. Mary went through a season where she couldn't smell or taste. But the Lord has brought her out, right, Mary? Amen. She's going right now to eat some cheesecake. Have a good time. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> that sounds good, though, doesn't it? Wow. Matthew 3, um, excuse me. I've talked about some of this already, but I, I want to remember I said earlier. That Pentecost is a time of the celebration for abundance and the Lord's provision. So this is a party. The, the Jews did this because they loved doing it. They were commanded to do it. But these, are, these feasts, especially this feast, was a feast that nobody wanted to miss. Didn't want to miss Pentecost. You might miss Passover. Or you might miss some others. You know, like, oh, that was hard. The Day of Atonement. We got to repent of our sins. But this was party time. This was harvest time. And, and, and so in Ephesians chapter 5, I want to parallel this with the true spirit of this word. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's contrasting that what we reach for sometime in the world, the pleasures of the world, don't compare to the pleasure of the Holy Spirit. And we use those things that we use those things to cope, but we want to be more than copers. We want to be overcomers. Amen. So here's the here's the contrast. Don't do that, but do this. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs among yourselves, making music to the Lord in your heart. This is a party. This is talking about a, an atmosphere of joy and celebration, an atmosphere of worship and praise. Feeling, being filled with the Holy Spirit is not getting baptized in pickle juice. It's baptized in fire. And that fire causes us to burn with passion. And, and our hearts are, are filled with love and all the things that God wants us to have. So I just thought that was a neat, a neat way to see that. I hope you could catch what I'm saying. Is it, so many times we use these verses to condemn drinking. And, you know, I grew up in a, in a tradition that we didn't drink. And I still don't drink, but I drink. <laughs> you talk about some other things that Camille and I have gotten in trouble for. We've got religious spirits all stirred up. We get up here and we go, drink, 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 drink. Pastor Bill Johnson said one time, when the spirit says drink, you drink. When the Spirit says, eat, you eat. And today we're drinking. Are you my drinking buddies? <laughs> if we're going to be unoffendable, we can't let 
the things that people use to cope with cause us to judge them and push them away. We need to introduce them to the real thing that will cause them not to cope but to overcome. Isn't that a good word? That is a good word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I didn't even have that written down. That's the Lord. We're not copers. We're overcomers. Thank you, Jesus. So the Feast of Pentecost is not only the birthday of the nation of Israel, but by giving us the Holy Spirit, Jesus commissioned us to a global church. He said, take this gospel and go to the nations. So the church was born. And talk about a quick birth. Listen, I'm, I'd like to prophesy this. We're pretty comfortable in here. We've got lots of room. But get ready. When the Holy Spirit moves like I know he wants to, we're going to fill this place up. We're going to. Oh. Jim's going to come in one day and say, they're sitting in my chair. <laughs> Some of you are going to realize after a few weeks, I better get there earlier. I'm not going to have a seat. Hey, I can dream. You remember that movie, that beautiful little movie called Angels in the Outfield? That little orphan boy that wanted so badly to be adopted, and he would always say, it could happen. It could happen. In that spirit, I'm saying it could happen. In that spirit of faith, I'm saying it's going to happen. Because we're building an ark. And just like in the days of Noah, when God said, it's going to rain, and everybody said, what's that? God's saying today, revival is going to cover the earth like the water covers the sea. He's not going to send the flood rains. He's going to send the flood of glory. Glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth. Amen. And God's looking for churches that are going to build arcs. They're going to be able to host the glory, host the presence, and let the people come in to be healed, saved, and filled with the Spirit. Let God wash them and cleanse them. Paul said in the book of Romans, don't you know that you were washed? You were sanctified and you were justified in the name of the Lord. Every one of us. But there's a whole lot of them that need what you and I have. And what we have is not a thing. It's a person. We have Jesus. We have Holy Spirit. And we have a good, good Father. Hallelujah. And I, I do feel the love of God. I feel... Again, what I said Thursday to those pastors, I, I went on to try to encourage them. Guys, we're all going through stuff, and we're all, we're all easily discouraged because of numbers. One pastor said he hasn't had his church come back since COVID. Another pastor said that he talked to several members, and they said, we're satisfied to watch online. We don't want to come anymore. And the, and the enemy is creeping in, trying to pull us apart. Because Jesus said the real power of the gospel comes through unity. And, and, and the power of the gospel, uh, do not forsake coming together. You know why he said don't forsake it? Because that's one of the first priorities and strategies of the devil. Is to convince us you don't need to go. You just watch. You don't need to be there. You want, let's laugh at this lie. They don't need me. <laughs> what a lie. That's, that's true, isn't it? I'm not asking you to raise your hands. But sometimes you wake up. Eh. I've had that argument with God. God, I'm not going. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> but you know what? Here's another difference between the law and the spirit. The law operates on what you have to do. We move into a covenant of what we want to do. What we love to do. That we love to please God. We love to come together. We love to pray for one another. We love to worship together. It's not a bother. You're not a burden. But if you have a burden, we're going to bear it together. Everybody say together. Together. There's a lot of single adults in this church. And through my ministry, I've, I've had tremendous love and, and ministry to singles. I was single until I was 30. So now you can figure out how old I am. I've been married 33 years. But I was 30 when I got married. And Camilla's my first wife. <laughs> and my last wife, she said. <laughs> Amen. 
But you're not alone. When I was single, that was my message. Hey, guys, the author and finish of our faith didn't have to have another person to be complete. Paul, Paul was so strong about it, he said, it's better for you if you were like me. <laughs> Don't say amen, husbands, at all. We can agree to disagree with the apostle right there, right? Oh, no, Lord. I'm going to stand on the side that the scripture says two are better than one. <laughs> but that being said, wherever you are, you have the Holy Spirit. You are not alone. You are f- adequate. You are f- filled with power. The presence of the Lord makes the difference in every situation. You're light in darkness. You're salt of the earth. Everywhere I go, he's there. I want to read maybe one more scripture, and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, continue to love and do what we do. Because we're never off, right? When I got saved, he turned me on, and I'm still on. He told me to put on the armor. I didn't see anywhere where he said, take it off. Put it on, keep it on. I sleep in my armor. I take showers in my armor. It's an armor of light. It's my identity. It's who I am. In fact, I'll just do a little little rabbit trail here for a moment. When Adam and Eve were created, they were created with a garment of light. They shone. In fact, when Jesus was transfigured, I believe that what he looked like before Peter, James, and John was what Adam was created like. But when they fell, the light was removed. And what happened? They said, I'm naked. And God had to find another way to cover them. But we, were, we're, we're, we are, even now, spiritually, we are people that are people of the light. We're children of the light. And we don't turn it off. The other day I was so tired, I laid down, and Camilla hadn't come to bed yet. And you know we're, we're staying in our new place now. So we have one little lamp, <laughs> and it's on her side of the bed. But she needs that because she gets everything together. She's got her little routine. Everything's in its place. And, and I said, I got to go to bed. She said, well, I need the light. She said, I need the light. I said, don't worry. I'm so tired. I'm going to close my eyes and go to sleep. And I did. I s- slept with the light on. How about that for a T-shirt? I sleep with the light on. I eat with the light on. Everywhere I go, the light is on. So I just want to read this uh, this one account. I'm going to read a couple more scriptures. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Once when he was eating with them. Now this is when Jesus had appeared after his resurrection. And he appeared to them for 40 days and probably about 10 different times. So he wasn't always with them, but he would show up. And here he was eating with them, and he commanded them, Do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine their hearts as he told them what was going to happen? How about your heart today? What does your heart do when you start to realize, I am baptized with the Holy Spirit? I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8, and this is a very common scripture. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This is the person of the Holy Spirit coming upon you. You will receive power. That's the dunamis power. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. So one of the first fruits of Pentecost, the festival of first fruits, is to tell somebody... This is good. It's too good to keep to myself. I'm the guy in the restaurant. When I get something that I really like, I want to stand up and say, Hey, everybody, you need to try this. Acts 2, verse 1 through 6. On the day of Pentecost, this is a good day for these people, amen? Amen. All the believers were meeting together in one place. Now, I'm just going to go into this briefly, but there was the upper room where they prayed and met. But 
as we've studied this, we realize that they left the upper room and they went into the temple courts where there were thousands of people. It wasn't when they were in the upper room the Holy Spirit was given. It was when they were in the temple, the, the, the courts of the temple. And that Holy Spirit was given and they spoke in tongues and the people heard them. And Otherwise, how did that happen when there was nobody else there? Anyway... There was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. So I just want to summarize this with when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, something's going to happen. I want you to expect a fresh baptism that there will be change, that there will be a shift, there will be a momentum, there will be an impartation, there will be an encounter. How about just being still and knowing? You're not just being still, you're knowing, you're experiencing. That knowing is the intimate union, knowing, as a man knows a woman, knowing in the stillness of his presence that he is God. Yeah. Last verse. In Acts 2.15, when Peter stood up, remember they're now in the temple courts and they're speaking in tongues and the people are hearing them and many of them are hearing that language, their language. They were from Egypt. They were, from, they were Jews from all over that had come back to Jerusalem, the capital, where the temple was. And they're there in the courts and this group of 120 people have this thunderous, encounter with Holy Spirit, and they're praying in tongues. Now, some people would say they were praying in other languages. I I can believe that. The Holy Spirit can do that. But I also can believe they were praying in tongues, and the people heard their languages. There was a supernatural interpretation for those people to understand what they were praying. But it was obviously such a, I'm going to use the word ruckus, such a ruckus, that the people thought, what is going on over there? There was something happening, and all, these, all this huge... And again, I've looked at the maps of the courtyard. It's a huge area. It's like an arena. People are everywhere, and all of a sudden, something happened over there. What's going on? And they hear, like chickens or something. You know, what's that? And what's the first thing they thought? They're drunk. It's just 9 o'clock. Man, these guys are diehard drinkers. They're drunk at 9 in the morning. So Peter stands up when he sees the crowd gathering and watching what's happening. He said, these people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. 9 o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel in the last days. Come on, somebody just, just confess, we are in those days. We are in the last days. We're part of the last days. That was the name of Keith Green's ministry right here in Lindale. Last days ministries. Amply described. We are in the last days. And I believe Jesus is coming soon. You know, I've had mothers and grandmothers that believed he would come in their lifetime. My mother always told me, oh, I'm not going to die. I'm going up in the rapture. Well, she definitely went up. And I'm going to meet her one day, whether I go down and up or just up. (laughs) In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. And again, we can read this as Westerners, as Gentiles, and not even pick up the power of what Peter just said to a group of Jews. The prophet Joel said the Spirit would be poured out on all people. That's us. And I got something good to tell you in just a second. Um, Your sons, your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. And in those days I will pour out my Spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. Now I just have to find this one little note that I wrote. That was so good. I'm not finding it right now, so I might have to just remember it. 
Hmm, maybe I deleted it by accident. And now I've deleted it out of my brain, my brain altogether. So maybe it's not a big deal. But I tell you what is a big deal, Pentecost. And isn't it even funny how the enemy has tried to divide us with the word Pentecost? I'm a Pentecostal. I'm not. Well, you better be. (laughs) Not in the religious sense, but we are all indwelled with the Holy Spirit. The first work of salvation is being born of the Spirit, right? So every believer is born of the Spirit. But this was prophesied that that same birth of something within you would meet the one who birthed it. And the Holy Spirit would come upon you. And when those two things connect and have encounter, it's dynamite. Boom. There's an explosion. Amen. But just to summarize this two thoughts, the first aspect of this baptism to me is hearing the favor and the the love of the Father telling us, you are my son, you are my daughter, I'm so pleased with you. I'm so pleased with you that I give you the most precious gift, the gift of Holy Spirit. Wow, that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, what am I going to do with this gift? How am I going to live with this person? How am I going to behave? How am I going to think? How? And the answer is, I'm going to be re- renewed. My mind is going to be restored. Uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? All this is the working of the Spirit in us. Amen? Amen. So, again, I'm kind of just kind of know the crowd today. Could I just have, if anyone would like to acknowledge that I am receiving a fresh baptism, just just wave your hand. I'm receiving a fresh baptism. Amen. Amen. And maybe, maybe this is for people that are watching. If you've never yielded, because you have to yield and invite Holy Spirit. He's so precious. He's like a dove. He's not going to come where he's not invited. He's not going to come where he's not received. But we welcome Holy Spirit. We say welcome Holy Spirit. So if you're watching or if you're in this room and you've not yielded and asked for that baptism of fire, that baptism of Holy Spirit, just simply ask. I'll give my testimony again sometime. But coming from a Baptist tradition, it was tough on me to ask the Holy Spirit to come. I didn't know what would happen, and it scared me to death. But I want to tell you this. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. My salvation and my filling with the Holy Spirit. And here's some really good news. The church has come a long way in the last 30 years through the revivals and charismatic movement and the word of faith and different things that have equipped us and taught us as the people of God all that God wants to do and all that he has for us. Now we realize that we should be and can be filled with the Holy Spirit when we get born again. We don't have to wait. It doesn't have to be a second experience. It was in the New Testament, remember? They asked the question, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Why, no, we haven't. We've not even heard of the Holy Spirit. But this is our job. We're telling everybody, tell everyone you can about the Holy Spirit. Because you can have the Holy Spirit now. If you're a Christian without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can have it. And if you're coming to Jesus, I want to tell you, not only receive Jesus being baptized for the forgiveness of sins, but coming out of that water, just as Jesus came out of the water, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit came upon him and empowered him. And if you know your Bible... You know that the next 40 days were days of testing where he didn't just fight devils. He fought Satan himself that he overcame. And you know what that means to you and me? We can overcome too, right? Let's stand up together. I do want to say that I'm going to be here and I'm going to ask Joy and Chris and Dennis and Justin. Would you all just come down to the front? 
I believe that one of the biblical mandates for encouraging us and for us to receive what God has for us is through the laying on of hands. And I'm calling these people because I know they are full of the Holy Spirit. So if you, before you leave, with just like a fresh touch and just somebody to agree and release the fire and the Holy Spirit presence and power into your life, then I want you to take advantage of it. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this amazing day, the day of Pentecost, the day that changed everything, and the church was born. You've created two institutions. You've created the family, and you've created the church. And the church is your family, and we have become family. We're not blood-related in the flesh, but we are absolutely blood-bought in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? So I just pray your blessing on every person. And God, what we've heard today, help us freely, freely we have received. Now let us freely, freely give. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on down and receive a fresh touch. I'm going to get one. I'm going to go over and let Joy pray for me. <laughs>